The musical I'm writing falls into the satirical category. My musical influences for this are Singing in the Rain, How to Succeed in Business, Thoroughly Modern Millie, Book of Mormon, and Guys and Dolls. Singing in the Rain is a 1952 film and is an original movie musical, meaning it wasn't based on anything else but itself. The reason I love this show, faces. I love the faces in this show. In the song Good Morning, at any given time, you can see exactly how you're supposed to feel as an audience member. Everyone is thrilled, smiling, ecstatic. What I love about this is that you don't have to think about how you feel. You just know. Yes, and what a lovely morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've talked the whole night through. Good morning. Good morning to you. Another thing about this show is the make and laugh scene. I am constantly inspired and in awe from this scene. As a performer and a comedian myself, I know that the audience is actively engaged in my storytelling if they're laughing. Also, I truly believe that physical comedy is a lost art. The way that Donald O'Connor throws his body around with reckless abandon is just truly crazy. I don't know that I could randomly drop to the floor without a pad under me. If any casting directors are watching, I totally could do that. <laughs> Every moment that Donald O'Connor is performing, you know that he's in it. He's there. He's physically moving, he's contorting his face, he's doing things that shouldn't be humanly possible. All because he really thinks that making them laugh is as important as anything else anyone could be doing. It's a noble art. On the complete opposite note of that, I think that the song Adelaide's Lament in Guys and Dolls is so important because of the subtlety. You don't always need physicality. The character Adelaide in this show truly believes that she's getting a cold because her boyfriend won't marry her. The humor comes from how seriously this character takes her fake ailment and how well the actress aligns her reactions with the music. Affecting the upper respiratory tract. In other words, just from waiting around for that plain little band of gold, a person can develop a cold. How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying is a Broadway show from 1961 that was eventually adapted into a movie in 1967 using the same star, Robert Morris. I love everything about this show because of how over the top and unbelievable everything is. Robert Morris plays this character who just walks into things. Like, he reads a book and suddenly he has a high-powered job? It may embarrass you to hear me say it, but say it I must, say it I must. He's just such a lovable dork. Thoroughly Modern Millie is a 1967 movie that eventually turned into a 2002 Broadway show. Different than usual. But what I love about this show is its choreography and the use of tap. In this show, tap is really important and woven into what's happening in the story. So when Sutton Foster's character starts singing, the entire office stands up, they are literally tapping their frustration away. Forget about the boy. Sutton Foster. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking, but now God knows anything goes. I cannot say enough wonderful things about Sutton Foster. She began performing at 15 professionally and hasn't left the stage since. She works her butt off at everything she does. She originated the role of Millie in Thoroughly Modern Millie. She has the personality of a hundred girls, and she can just do things with her face that nobody else can do. She's also a visual artist and almost as obsessed with dogs as I am. I can only hope that I can channel the amazing Sutton Foster in my performance someday. Book of Mormon. You can't talk about modern satire without acknowledging Book of Mormon, the Tony Award winning show written by the guys from South Park. There are a million things I love about this show, but I think the thing that I want to replicate in my musical is the character's lack of self-awareness. Elder Price in this show doesn't see his disinterest in his partner or his lack of interest in going anywhere but Orlando as a character flaw. Orlando, I love you. He thinks he's always in the right. I've always longed to help the needy to do the things I never dared. This was the time for me to step up. So then why was I so scared? 
A warlord who shoots people in the face? What's so scary about that? And that takes a certain level of ridiculousness. I want characters who are wrong and flawed and somehow we still root for them. When I watch Book of Mormon, you know, on YouTube, I root for Andrew Rannells. Every time. He's silly and naive and selfish, but I still want him to win. So hopefully my show can be as funny and as flawed and as beautiful and as talented as all these people in shows I just talked about. Maybe I'll get lucky. Da, 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 da. Heaven knows any